All right, welcome back. In the last couple of videos, we made these units and we made our marquee selection functionality so we can select them. Uh, now I want to set up something so I can right click somewhere on the map here or on the floor and uh, move these units to a new location. All right, so to get started with that, first thing I'm going to do here is open up my RTS interface. And I'm going to add a couple of functions here. I'm going to add one called uh, unit move command. And for this one, I need to add an input. I'll name it location and set the type to vector. Okay, I'm going to add another function here uh, called grab selected units. And this will have an output. And uh, select back to here. Okay, I'm going to call this units and it'll be an array of actors. So I'll just make this an array and uh, the type here, uh, oops, uh, actor. Okay, so uh, I'll compile that, close, and now I'm gonna open up my uh, marquee HUD here and I'll find that interface function we just made there, grab selected units, double click, and uh, we're going to respond to that with the selected units array. All right, uh, compile, close, and I'm going to open up the parent unit class. And for this one, I'm going to uh, make an event unit move command. And all right, when the unit receives this message, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to drag off location here and say move to location. Uh, I'm going to select this move to location or actor. And uh, I need to plug in a controller. And what it wants here is an AI controller reference. So I'll say get AI controller. Uh, and I'll plug that in here. And I also need to plug in the controlled actor, which is self. This is the parent uh, unit class. So self plugs into here. And um, actually, there's one more thing I have to do here. This is an asynchronous node. And uh, if you, when you issue a new move to location command, it doesn't necessarily clear uh, an existing command. So what I'll do first here is just drag from AI controller and say stop movement. And I'll plug that in here. And this is pretty much it. We're pretty much done the function here for uh, movement. Uh, we're relying on the AI controller and I'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, now I'm gonna set up the input action in the player controller. Okay, so in the player controller, uh, underneath uh, the left mouse button input here, I'm gonna right click and type in right mouse button. And uh, on the right mouse button event, what I want to do is the first thing is I'm going to right click. I'm going to say get hit result under cursor by channel. Uh, so that's going to get the first thing that I, that I hit underneath my cursor that responds to the visibility channel. Uh, and so, for, you know, for now, that's essentially going to be the floor uh, that I'm clicking on or, you know, whatever it is that I'm clicking on a static mesh in the uh, map. All right. Uh, so I'm going to get that and the hit result here, I'm going to say break hit result. And I'm going to say uh, the location, I want to uh, save it. So I'm going to say promote to variable. I'm going to call that right click location. Oops, uh, right click location. All right, and so that'll be the first thing we do here when we click the uh, right mouse button. Cinch that up here. And uh, okay, the next thing I wanna do is grab the selected units from the HUD blueprint. So I'm gonna say uh, get HUD, uh, grab selected units. Uh, and down the road, it might make sense to make our own variable in the player controller, uh, which also records the selected units rather than grab it from the HUD every time. Um, but I'll worry about that down the road. For now, we're going to grab the selected units, drag from that and say for each. And for each unit here, I'm going to issue a unit move command message. 
All right, and the uh, location here, I'm going to plug in the right click location. Okay, and so next thing is on this completed pin here, after we're done going through all the uh, units that are selected and issuing the unit move command, I'm going to say spawn uh, system at location. And this is a Niagara system, by the way, a Niagara FX. And I'm going to select this FX cursor. And this comes with the top down template. I'm just uh, reusing this asset. Uh, and location here, I'm just going to drag in the right click location. All right, and uh, so let's check it out here. Oops. Okay, uh, so I'll grab some of these units here. I'll right click and all right, we're moving to the location here and uh, you can see our blue arrows. That's the FX uh, cursor. That's the Niagara system that we're spawning. All right, so a couple of things here. First thing is uh, all of these units are moving to the same uh, exact spot, the same exact location, because I'm issuing the same location to every single unit. And so they're getting all clumped up here and really, you know, tight together. Uh, so ultimately in the player controller, you wouldn't send the right click location to all of these units. Uh, in fact, what you would do is some sort of formation logic. Uh, so formation logic goes here and I'm going to put that because I'm not really going to get into it in this video or really any of these videos because it could mean different things to different people. It all depends on how you're, what kind of game you're building, what kind of uh, units you might have. You maybe you have uh, hero units that would be out front, and you might have heavy melee units uh, flanking both sides. Ranged units would line up behind that, and maybe caster units behind that, or whatever your idea might be. This is something that you would implement specifically for in your own game for your own purposes. Uh, so I'm going to leave that for now and I'm going to move on and we'll show you uh, another issue here. Uh, and it uh, can be an issue depending or maybe not depending again on how you're uh, setting up your game or your units, right? So I'm just going to line these uh, units up here relatively tight together. And uh, I'm going to grab this guy, bring him over here. And now let's say I want to move this guy uh, over here. So I'm going to click here. And uh, he just stopped. He's stuck there. Uh, let's try that again. No action. Uh, same thing from the other side, obviously. Uh, no action. Okay, and what's happening here is this. In the uh, parent unit class here, when we issue a move command, we're using this move to location or actor. And this relies on the AI controller. Uh, the AI controller, uh, by default, I'll just click the root of the parent unit class here. And in the details panel here, I can find the AI controller class. And the default contr is AI controller, which is the out of the box uh, basic AI controller. And it's uh, fairly lightweight uh, for what it's doing, but it's also uh, fairly dumb, fairly stupid. It doesn't walk around anything. It'll just stop like that. And uh, so what you could do is a custom solution where you do some line traces uh, out in front of the unit as you're walking. If you're uh, going to run into something or another unit, you could uh, make another path or something. Um, and you could make your own custom solution uh, if you wanted to. But luckily, we can use another built-in solution that basically does the same thing, does just what I'm describing. And we can change our AI controller class here to the detour crowd AI controller. And so let's just make that change there and see the difference. I'm going to line up these units uh, in a similar way here. All right. And uh, now I'll grab this guy, bring him over here, and say I want to click over here. And now magically he finds his way around these actors. He doesn't run into them. And so uh, that's obviously much better behavior, uh, you know, for these uh, for this kind of game, for an RTS style game, right? Um, and so I'll just show you one more thing to do with that uh, detour crowd controller. So I'm going to go to project settings here, and I can go to crowd manager, and this is where I'm going to find the settings for that uh, detour crowd. Uh, manager, uh, or controller. 
And so what it is basically is there's four different levels uh, preset and you could change any of these. You could add more levels, but there's four different levels you can choose from right off the hop that they've uh, Epic has sort of built in here. And uh, all of these first values here, the, the bias, weight, uh, range, and uh, custom pattern index, okay, all of these are essentially the same for all of these four entries. The only thing that's changed here is these entries here for adaptive divisions, adaptive rings, and adaptive depth. Uh, depth. So we have five, two, and one uh, at level one. Level two is five, two, and two. Uh, then it's 7, 2, and 3, and then 7, 3, and 3. And so uh, each level is introducing a larger performance hit. And in return, you get a more accurate detour path. So you have to basically decide somewhere between these settings as to how, where you want to balance your uh, quality of pathing uh, to your performance hit uh, uh, on the CPU. Hope that makes sense. All right. Uh, so moving on here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to look at is the navigation bounds. So in the top-down uh, map here, the top-down template, uh, they've already included a navigation bounds for us. So there's this navigation folder, and we've got this nav mesh bounds volume. And I'll just back out here and uh, show you this volume is this yellow box that surrounds the entire map. Okay. And so if you were using a different map or made your own map, you would have to add this nav mesh volume or none of the AI controller movement functions are going to work. Uh, so you would go to uh, add a class here, go to volumes, nav mesh bounds, drag it in and size it up. Um, so this one's already included and uh, we can press P at any time. You can press P to see your navigation layer. And uh, we can see here basically everything's all green here. That any, anything that's green is a valid spot for your move to location uh, node to target. If you target somewhere that's not in the green area, the actor is not going to move. Uh, and the other thing we can look at here is when you shrink down uh, units here, like these are one third of the size of the UE mannequin, um, you run into an issue here where uh, the nav mesh wants to continue or wants to allow a player to step up to this height over the side of this ramp. You don't have to enter the ramp from here. And when you have a really small unit that steps this much height, it kind of looks funny. This is not bad for a full size character, but it, uh, it doesn't look great for a third size character. And so I'll show you real quick how we can fix that. And just go to uh, project settings here and uh, we're going to look for uh, it's under the navigation settings, but I'm just going to uh, go step. And I can find here under navigation mesh, uh, agent max step height. And it's at 35, and that's uh, why it's letting you, uh, why the area is green there. It's all up to a, a difference of 35 from the ground level that it's still letting you step up. Uh, so I can lower this, say, to something like uh, 12, uh, which is roughly a third. Uh, since we're doing about a third scale here. Uh, so I'll close that and now we can see we've got a much more realistic allowable step height onto this ramp. And so that may or may not affect your, uh, you know, your game or your design concerns, but I just wanted to show you that. All right, so that's basically it for this video. That wraps up uh, the move to on right click command. And we're gonna get into some more of the core mechanics for RTS games in the next few videos. So stay tuned and I'll see you then.